Welcome to notes 1.8, Progressive Era Presidents. These cover Progressive Era Presidents and also look at how they compare to previous presidents. So make sure you learn about president, presidents and their legislation this week. So before you can really understand Progressive Era Presidents, we need to understand the Gilded Age Presidents so we can compare the two. Now, some things about the Gilded Age presidents. First of all, the Gilded Age and their presidencies were characterized by this whole policy of laissez-faire, or hands-off economic policy. This is where the government really didn't get involved in economics. They left it to the local level, or really to companies, to deal with any economic issues that came up. So it was really about the companies, the individual business owners taking care of it, and we know how well that went from our previous information. So think about what you knew, and that's really what we're talking about. Now, if you remember from when we talked about unions and businesses, what you should remember is the government did occasionally get involved in these business issues and in companies. And one of those was to be against unions. They actually sided with the companies over the unions, even get going so far as to send federal troops and help to the companies to try to get rid of unions. So when the government did get involved, it was actually on the side of the businesses, not on the side of the workers. One of the other things that the government really did during this time, I mean, we've talked about the Gilded Age being a time of a lot of corruption and things, is that they practiced the presidents as well as local politicians. We talked about it with political um, bosses and political machines, but presidents also practiced this idea of patronage or the spoils system. So in patronage and the spoils system, the idea is that political supporters were, were rewarded with jobs, um, and jobs that they weren't necessarily qualified for. So if someone was supporting you and helped you get into office, you might give them a good job that they really weren't qualified for. So they'd end up getting paid well and they'd keep this job for a long time, and so it really benefited them to support you and get you into office. This system had a lot of flaws, and it really came to the forefront and people realized this in 1881 when um, it resulted in President Garfield's assassination. So this man who thought that he should have gotten a political office because he was a supporter of President Garfield, helped him get elected, um, did not get a political office, and actually assassinated President Garfield. So people started to realize that this was a problem and some things needed to change, and that's going to start taking us into the progressive era. Now, the presidents that we're talking about in the Gilded Age, the ones who didn't really get involved, practice laissez-faire, practice the spoils system or patronage, um, those are a lot of guys you probably don't remember their names. So we're talking about people like Ulysses S. Grant, Rutherford B. Hayes, James Garfield, Chester Arthur, Grover Cleveland, Benjamin Harrison, and William McKinley. And those are their pictures, you can see them there. And they're probably people you can't tell me anything else about their presidency besides what I just told you. So as you can see, Gilded Age presidents are not really impressive presidents as far as their actions and the policies they put in place. But all of that is going to change in 1901 when William McKinley is assassinated and his vice president, Teddy Roosevelt, takes office. And Teddy Roosevelt really changes the presidency into a progressive presidency. He has a lot of ideas. He is very, a very active president. Roosevelt was very active both domestically at home with issues in the U.S. and in foreign policy. So he had a lot of things he did with that. We're going to talk about the foreign policy things in a later section. That's actually the next part, part five, of our unit. So he, that goes along with imperialism. We're really going to focus on domestic policy in these notes with Teddy Roosevelt. Now, Roosevelt is really one of the most progressive presidents the U.S. has ever had. Um, so if somebody asks you for a president who embodies the progressive era, Roosevelt would be your best answer. Some of the things that he actually did in his presidency, the Pure Food and Drug Act, the Meat Inspection Act, um, and those two are tied to Upton Sinclair's book, The Jungle. So Roosevelt read it, was really pretty disgusted with the idea, like what had happened and what he was reading about and the fact that people were eating this. So he works to change that and get these laws passed. So Roosevelt actually 
listens to the muckraker, the progressives, and has things change. Not only is Roosevelt worried about the health of the citizens, he also shows this through conservation efforts, but he also is really someone who sides with the workers occasionally. He is known as a trust buster, and you see a few cartoons here that are showing him raking up trusts and monopolies and stopping big companies. Um, he saw that as being better for the U.S. So Roosevelt really does try to do what's best for the U.S., what's best for the people, and that includes the workers. So he came up with this idea called the Square Deal. The Square Deal is Roosevelt's overall policy that he's trying to balance the interests of businesses and workers and the consumers. He wants to make it fair for everyone. So that's why he's looking at trust busting and getting rid of monopolies. He's looking at better working conditions and safer food for the consumers. He's looking at conservation efforts to help the majority of the American people. So he's really trying to kind of change things a little bit and make it more fair for all Americans, not just one group. So you can see here, there are a few things that Roosevelt did that really show, he actually named muckrakers, he was the first to use that, um, but some of the issues and topics that Roosevelt really cared about and got involved in during his presidency are listed here. So Roosevelt did a lot in the time he was president. He served seven years of the presidency, three years out of McKinley's term, and then he was elected once on his own and served those four years. So after seven years, Roosevelt decided that it was time for him to step aside, and he supported his vice president, William Taft, to become the next Republican president, because Roosevelt was a Republican. And so Taft easily gets elected in 1908, becomes the next president, and during Taft's years, he continues Roosevelt's reforms, but doesn't really push new, doesn't push for more. And Roosevelt's really disappointed in this. He was so progressive and pushed for so much change that he decides in 1912 that he wants to run for president again. So in 1912, Roosevelt asks the Republican Party to run him as the presidential candidate, not Taft. The Republicans actually say no, and they run Taft as their president, or their presidential candidate. Roosevelt then forms his own political party, known as the Bull Moose Party. It's actually officially called the Progressive Party, but there is a big bull moose that is his symbol, and so you have Republicans as the elephant, the bull moose for um, Roosevelt, and then you have the Democrats running Woodrow Wilson against those two. So here you can see on the left is the Democrat Wilson, in the center is Roosevelt, and on the right hand side is Taft who is running as the Republican candidate. So because we really have two Republican candidates running, um, and Teddy Roosevelt was so popular, they split the Republican vote, which allows Wilson to very easily win the election and become the next president. So Wilson's going to be the next president um, here in 1912, and he really is also progressive and is involved in a lot of progressive topics. So you can see that a few of these political cartoons and things kind of show this election. So this victory against the super popular Teddy Roosevelt is huge for Wilson and for the Democrats. So Wilson is very active in addressing some domestic issues. There's also, again, some foreign policy issues that are very big for Wilson, but we'll talk about those in Section 5. Um, he lowers the overall tax rate for all Americans. He localizes the federal banking system. He provides massive aid to farmers. And he creates the Federal Trade Commission to ensure fair business practices. All of those are really important things that Wilson does to make things more fair and kind of continue Teddy Roosevelt's square deal idea even though Wilson is a Democrat and doesn't say he's continuing Teddy Roosevelt's fair deal practices. So a few of Wilson's biggest successes as president, there are actually three amendments to the Constitution that are passed while Wilson is president. The 17th Amendment, the 18th Amendment, and the 19th Amendment. 
And the 17th Amendment is about how vacancies in the Senate are replaced and kind of making it more fair to elect senators. It used to be that they were appointed by the state legislature. And because we know that those were very corrupt with political machines, you can see why allowing people to vote for senators was a really big reform during the time. That was very much progress and a big deal. The 18th Amendment, also passed under Wilson, um, actually tied into World War I because it tied into rationing and needing the resources for World War I. But the 18th Amendment is prohibition, and so temperance is finally successful and prohibition passes with the 18th Amendment outlawing alcohol. And then, like I said in some earlier notes, once they outlaw alcohol, the 19th Amendment is passed in 1920. Wilson is a part of this. Um, and the 19th Amendment gives women the right to vote. So women do not vote in prohibition. It's done before women have the right to vote. But that's a very important, very progressive issue that we've already talked about, people pushing for this. And we see the changes, and we see it becoming more and more fair, and things changing. And that's progress. So Wilson is definitely considered a progressive president for his involvement in these amendments. So other issues that Wilson was concerned about, um, child labor, working hours, um, those were two really big things. He was very concerned about those working conditions, child labor, and those hours. And he really had a lot of legislation and a lot of involvement with those. Um, getting rid of the banks and making sure banks were more fair, making sure that there were no more trusts, so he did trust busting as well. So Wilson was really involved and, like I said, had a very similar record to Teddy Roosevelt. He was not the same personality Teddy Roosevelt was, and we'll talk about Teddy Roosevelt's personality in class, but Wilson continued a lot of those square deal programs even though he's a Democrat, not a Republican. So what, why are we learning about progressivism? Why does it matter? Well, it's really left a legacy for us. It really changed the expectation of government for people. So we look at the progressive presidents and we look at just three presidents, one of whom only served one term. And we see the differences that they made and the changes that they made in American society and what people expect of the national government. Americans today expect the government to be involved in business regulation. We expect fair practices from businesses for workers. We expect a square deal. We expect that the government will address social problems and unemployment and working hours and unfair conditions and who is working and all sorts of things. We expect them to put rules and regulations into place that will help the people, the businesses, the economy, the consumers. And so we really look at this as just something that government does now when prior to the progressive era that didn't happen. So there's really a change in the level of involvement in the government in your personal life and everyday life and the expectation that government is involved every day in your personal life from the progressive era. So make sure that if you have any questions about the progressive era and progressive era presidents, you bring those to class and ask them before the next quiz. Um, hopefully you understand some of the basics about what some of the big topics where Teddy wrote the differences between the Gilded Age presidents and the progressive era presidents, some of Teddy Roosevelt's big uh, practices and impacts on the progressive era and also Woodrow Wilson's big impacts. You don't have to know any specific impacts that Taft had. We will also talk more about Roosevelt and Wilson in class this week just to make sure that you have a better understanding and we can go more in depth in class. So like I said, make sure you bring any questions you have to class and I will see you tomorrow in class.